Reindeer. The reindeer, Rangifer tarandus, also known as caribou in North America, is a species of deer with circumpolar distribution, native to Arctic, subarctic, tundra, boreal, and mountainous regions of northern Europe, Siberia, and North America. This includes both sedentary and migratory populations. Rangifer herd size varies greatly in different geographic regions. Rangifer varies in size and color from the smallest, the Svalbard reindeer, to the largest, the boreal woodland caribou. The North American range of caribou extends from Alaska through Yukon, the Northwest Territories and Nunavut into the boreal forest and south through the Canadian Rockies and the Columbia and Selkirk Mountains. The barren ground caribou, porcupine caribou, and peri caribou live in the tundra, while the shy boreal woodland caribou prefer the boreal forest. The porcupine caribou and the barren ground caribou form large herds and undertake lengthy seasonal migrations from birthing grounds to summer and winter feeding grounds in the tundra and taiga. The migrations of porcupine caribou herds are among the longest of any mammal. Barren ground caribou are also found in Kitar in Greenland, but the larger herds are in Alaska, the Northwest Territories, and Nunavut. The Tymir herd of migrating Siberian tundra reindeer R. T. Sibiricus, in Russia is the largest wild reindeer herd in the world, varying between 400,000 and 1 million. What was once the second largest herd is the migratory boreal woodland caribou R. T. Caribou, George River herd in Canada, with former variations between 28,000 and 385,000. As of January 2018, there are fewer than 9,000 animals estimated to be left in the George River herd, as reported by the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. The New York Times reported in April 2018 of the disappearance of the only herd of southern mountain caribou in the contiguous United States with an expert calling it functionally extinct after the herd's size dwindled to a mere three animals. Some subspecies are rare and at least one has already become extinct, the Queen Charlotte Islands caribou of Canada. Historically, the range of the sedentary boreal woodland caribou covered more than half of Canada and into the northern states in the U.S. woodland caribou have disappeared from most of their original southern range and were designated as threatened in 2002 by the Committee on the Status of Endangered Wildlife in Canada. Environment Canada reported in 2011 that there were approximately 34,000 boreal woodland caribou in 51 ranges remaining in Canada. Siberian tundra reindeer herds are in decline, and Rangifer tarandus is considered to be vulnerable by the IUCN. Arctic peoples have depended on caribou for food, clothing, and shelter, such as the Caribou Inuit, the inland-dwelling Inuit of the Kivalik region in northern Canada, the Caribou clan in Yukon, the Inupiat, the Inuvialaut, the Han, the northern Tuchone, and the Gwich'iran, who followed the porcupine caribou for millennia. Hunting wild reindeer and herding of semi-domesticated reindeer are important to several Arctic and sub-Arctic peoples such as the Duhala for meat, hides, antlers, milk, and transportation. The Sami people Sapmi, have also depended on reindeer herding and fishing for centuries. In Sapmi, reindeer are used to pull a polk, a Nordic sled. Male and female reindeer can grow antlers annually, although the proportion of females that grow antlers varies greatly between population and season. Antlers are typically larger on males. In traditional Christmas legend, Santa Claus's reindeer pull a sleigh through the night sky to help Santa Claus deliver gifts to good children on Christmas Eve. Physical Characteristics In most populations both sexes grow antlers, the reindeer is the only cervid species in which females grow them as well as males. Androgens play an essential role in the antler formation of cervids. The antlerogenic genes in reindeer have more sensitivity to androgens in comparison with other cervids. There is considerable variation between subspecies in the size of the antlers, e.g. they are rather small and spindly in the northernmost subspecies, but on average the bull reindeer's antlers are the second largest of any extant deer, after the moose. In the largest subspecies, the antlers of large males can range up to 100 cm in width and 135 cm in beam length. They have the largest antlers relative to body size among living deer species. Antler size measured in number of points reflects the nutritional status of the reindeer and climate variation of its environment. The number of points on male reindeer increases from birth to five years of age and remains relatively constant from then on. In male caribou, antler mass but not the number of tines varies in concert with body mass. While antlers of bull woodland caribou are typically smaller than barren ground caribou, they can be over one meter across. They are flattened, compact and relatively dense. 
Geist describes them as frontally emphasized, flat-beamed antlers. Woodland caribou antlers are thicker and broader than those of the barren ground caribou and their legs and heads are longer. Quebec Labrador bull caribou antlers can be significantly larger and wider than other woodland caribou. Central barren ground bull caribou are perhaps the most diverse in configuration and can grow to be very high and wide. Mountain caribou are typically the most massive with the largest circumference measurements. The antler's main beams begin at the brow, extending posterior over the shoulders and bowing so that the tips point forward. The prominent, palmate brow tines extend forward, over the face. The antlers typically have two separate groups of points, lower and upper. Antlers begin to grow on male reindeer in March or April and on female reindeer in May or June. This process is called antlerogenesis. Antlers grow very quickly every year on the males. As the antlers grow, they are covered in thick velvet, filled with blood vessels and spongy in texture. The antler velvet of the barren ground caribou and boreal woodland caribou is dark chocolate brown. The velvet that covers growing antlers is a highly vascularized skin. This velvet is dark brown on woodland or barren ground caribou and slate gray on prairie caribou and the dolphin union caribou herd. Velvet lumps in March can develop into a rack measuring more than a meter in length by August. When the antler growth is fully grown and hardened, the velvet is shed or rubbed off. To the Inuit, for whom the caribou is a culturally important keystone species, the months are named after landmarks in the caribou life cycle. For example, a mirajit in the Igloolik region is when velvet falls off caribou antlers. In late autumn or early winter after the rut, male reindeer lose their antlers, growing a new pair the next summer with a larger rack than the previous year. Female reindeer keep their antlers until they calve. In the Scandinavian and Arctic Circle populations, old males' antlers fall off in late December, young males fall off in the early spring and females fall off in the summer. The color of the fur varies considerably, both between individuals and depending on season and subspecies. Northern populations, which usually are relatively small, are whiter, while southern populations, which typically are relatively large, are darker. This can be seen well in North America, where the northernmost subspecies, the prairie caribou, is the whitest and smallest subspecies of the continent, while the southernmost subspecies, the boreal woodland caribou, is the darkest and largest. The coat has two layers of fur, a dense woolly undercoat and longer haired overcoat consisting of hollow, air-filled hairs. Fur is the primary insulation factor that allows reindeer to regulate their core body temperature in relation to their environment, the thermogradient, even if the temperature rises to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In 1913, Doug Moore noted how the woodland caribou swim so high out of the water, unlike any other mammal, because their hollow, air-filled, quill-like hair acts as a supporting, life jacket. The females usually measure 162 to 205 centimeters in length and weigh 80 to 120 kg. The males, or bulls, as they are often called, are typically larger, to an extent which varies between the different subspecies, measuring 180 to 214 centimeters in length and usually weighing 159 to 182 kg. Exceptionally large males have weighed as much as 318 kg. Weight varies drastically between seasons, with males losing as much as 40% of their pre-rut weight. Shoulder height is usually 85 to 150 centimeters, and the tail is 14 to 20 centimeters long. The reindeer from Svalbard are the smallest. They are also relatively short-legged and may have a shoulder height of as little as 80 centimeters. A study by researchers from University College London in 2011 revealed that reindeer can see light with wavelengths as short as 320 nanometers, i.e. in the ultraviolet range, considerably below the human threshold of 400 nanometers. It is thought that this ability helps them to survive in the Arctic, because many objects that blend into the landscape in light visible to humans, such as urine and fur, produce sharp contrasts in ultraviolet. The tapetum lucidum of arctic reindeer eyes changes in color from gold in summer to blue in winter to improve their vision during times of continuous darkness and perhaps enable them to better spot predators. Thanks for watching.